Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another five nights of dinner on WW. I cannot wait to share these five recipes with you. Each and every one was so good. These are the recipes that we highlighted in my Facebook group challenge that I did just a few weeks ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my Facebook group right there for you. If you are not part of my group, make sure that you come on over and join us. We have over 7,000 amazing positive members. So come on over, join my Facebook group, and just get yourself a little bit of extra information, positivity, encouragement. It is such a wonderful, wonderful group of ladies and men. So these recipes actually came from a challenge that I created for the members of the group. They, again, were amazing. So if you want to see what five recipes that I have in store for you for another five nights of dinner on WW, then just stay tuned. <music> dinner I am making ground beef tachas so it is a Mexican themed dish using tater tots it sounds absolutely delicious so let me show you what is in tonight's dinner so first I have some taco seasoning some tater tots I am using the simple truth organic potato puffs they actually have less points than say the Orida potatoes salsa Two types of cheeses for mine. I'm going to do some of the Trader Joe's light Mexican blend and some fat-free cheese to help cut down on the points. You'll need some 96.4 extra lean ground beef. And for toppings, I have some shredded lettuce, a tomato, and some green onions. So let's get started on our ground beef tachas. The first thing that we need to do for tonight's dinner is get our tater tots cooking. So I've counted out 55, which is what I figured into the points of the recipe. I've lined a baking sheet with some foil, and I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven until they are cooked all the way through and nice and crispy. While our potato puffs are cooking in the oven, we're going to go ahead and get some ground beef nice and browned on our stove. And then we're going to be adding in some taco seasoning and some salsa to make our taco mixture. Once your hamburger is browned, we are going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of taco seasoning. And then we are going to add a cup of fresh salsa. You may need to add some water as well if the salsa isn't enough liquid to mix in your taco seasoning. And we're just going to let this cook down for just a couple of minutes until all of those flavors get nice and incorporated. And our tater tots are just about out of the oven. I just pulled the tater tots out of the oven. Here is our delicious meat mixture. Yum. So the next step is we are going to take our meat mixture and we're just going to top our tater tots with it. Get them nice and coated in our taco meat. And then we'll add some cheese and we're going to pop this back in the oven for just a few more minutes until just that cheese on top gets nice and melted. But this looks so good. So let me get this meat mixture on there and then we'll go ahead and add on our cheese. Once we've added our meat mixture, we're going to add our two cups of cheese. So I have our one and a half cups of cheese, three quarters of a cup of fat free, three quarters of a cup of the Trader Joe's light mozzarella. And I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. And then we are going to put this back in the oven for just a couple of minutes. We want to make sure our cheese gets nice and melty. So it kind of binds everything together that way as well. You're not even going to notice the fat free cheese mixed in with the light cheese. It's just going to kind of make it all cheesy goodness. So I'm going to get this back in the oven until this cheese is melted. This looks delicious. Once your cheese is melted, then you can go ahead and add your topping. So I've diced up one Roma tomato. So I'm going to add that to the top. And you can do whatever toppings you want. Just remember that anything that you add with points, you'll just want to recalculate your points from the points that I give you here at the end. We're also going to add some chopped green onion to the top, oh yum. And then we're also gonna go ahead and add some shredded lettuce. So it's basically similar to nachos, but using uh, cute little potato puffs or tater tots instead. So there you have it. Let me bring this up close and show you. There are 
the ground beef tachas. They look amazing. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a couple of minutes. Uh, one thing you could add is some light sour cream and that would be really good on the tachas. So I'm gonna let this cool, I'll plate this up and I'll be back to give you the smart points. So here is my completed dinner. So this is one sixth of the ground beef tachas. I did go ahead and top mine with one tablespoon of the light sour cream. So one sixth of the tachas is seven smart points and then an additional point for the sour cream. So my dinner is a total of eight smart points for this deliciousness. So bon appetit for some ground beef tachas. For dinner tonight, I am making barbecue chicken pizza and I'm gonna be making some two ingredient dough for my pizza. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. So for the two ingredient dough, you're going to need some self-rising flour and some non-fat Greek yogurt. Barbecue sauce, I'll be using the G. Hughes Original Sugar Free. Mozzarella or any type of cheese. I'm gonna be doing the Trader Joe's Organic Shredded Mozzarella Cheese. Chicken, and for veggies, a red and green pepper, a red onion, and I'm going to add this half of zucchini that I have left over onto our pizzas. And then for my husband, I'm just gonna make his on this Simple Truth Organic, classic, thin, and crispy pizza crust. So let's get started on our barbecue chicken pizza. The first thing I'm gonna do is boil my chicken to make it quick and easy, and that way I can shred it up for the pizza. So I have two chicken breasts here. I'm gonna get this water to a boil, and I'm just gonna boil these until they are cooked completely through. While our chicken is boiling, we're gonna chop up our veggies. So I'm gonna dice up a green pepper and a red pepper, a red onion, and the rest of this zucchini. I'm just gonna put them here on some paper plates, and then we'll use that to top our pizzas. chicken continues to boil. I've added one third of a cup of self-rising flour to my bowl. Now I do not measure my Greek yogurt. I just add it until my dough is the consistency, but normally you would add one to one. So you would add a third cup of the non-fat Greek yogurt. I just like to add it until my dough is the consistency that I want my dough to be, where it's not too terribly sticky without having to add any additional flour. So you're just gonna mix this really well, give this a chance to get that flour and that yogurt nice and combined. And then once our chicken is done, we'll shred it up and we're ready to assemble our pizzas. To roll out my dough, I have this handy little roller. This I picked up off of Amazon. It is linked down in my Amazon store below. I wanna say it was like $6, so really inexpensive, perfect for two ingredient dough. I'm gonna use the larger side, but I am just gonna give it a quick spray with some nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm just gonna roll this out to the thickness that I want. So I like my dough pretty on the thin side. So I'm just gonna roll it out again until it's the thickness that I want that's perfect for my toppings. And then again, I'll pull the chicken off the stove and we'll be ready to start putting together our pizzas. Now you can cook your dough first in the oven for a few minutes if you want to. I never do. I find that my dough gets cooked just fine without pre-cooking it, but I know a lot of people like to pre-cook their dough rather than just throwing it into the oven raw with all the toppings so whatever your preference is so I'm gonna get this rolled out and we'll be ready to top our pizza so I just shredded up some chicken for my pizza so I am ready to get this nice and assembled so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little bit of Italian seasoning just over my crust I like this as it kind of gives a nice authentic pizza taste to it. And then I'll add a little bit more as well on top of the crust. And then I'm going to take about a quarter of a cup of the G Hughes barbecue sauce, and I'm just going to spread it out 
over my pizza and I'm just gonna use a spoon and kind of spread it out over the crust. Just get it nice and spread out so there's a little bit of barbecue sauce on all of the goodness of our two ingredient dough. Yum. And then to that, I am gonna go ahead and add my chicken since that's my protein. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that on next. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I just want a little bit of chicken on each piece of my pizza. I'm gonna be adding quite a few veggies and things as well. So we don't wanna go too crazy and make it so heavy that we can't pick up a piece of our barbecue chicken pizza. So. I think that that is probably good for chicken. Oh, looking delicious. And then it's time to add some veggies. So I'm gonna start here with my zucchini and I'm just going to add a few pieces of zucchini all over my pizza. And then we'll add some peppers and some sliced red onions. But I thought this would be a nice addition to the pizza, a little bit of zucchini. And then we'll do some sliced red onions. So those will get nice and crispy in the cooking process. And then lastly, we will do some red and some green peppers. And then we'll top it with our cheese and we're ready to go into the oven. This looks super good. Again, little green and red pepper in all the corners. And then lastly, I have a third cup of the Trader Joe's mozzarella cheese. And I'm just going to evenly spread that out over the top of my pizza. Oh, this looks delicious. And then the last step before it goes into the oven is we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna add on just another little teeny bit of the Italian seasoning just for fun over the top of our pizza. That way it kind of melts in with the cheese. And we are ready to put our barbecue chicken pizza into the oven. I'm gonna put it in at 400 until it is completely cooked through. So here is my completed barbecue chicken pizza. I just pulled it out of the oven. I'm gonna slice it up. This entire pizza is only seven smart points. Everything on the pizza is zero with the exception of the crust itself and the cheese. The amount of barbecue sauce that we use is zero as well. So this is my seven smart point barbecue pizza. For tonight's dinner, I'm gonna be making a ground beef casserole. If you just have the casserole, it would be a very keto or low carb friendly dinner. So I wanted to throw that as an option in for you, but we are going to pair ours with some potatoes and some veggies. So let me show you first what is in the ground beef casserole. So you're going to need some extra lean ground beef. I'm gonna be doing the 96.4 from Trader Joe's fat-free or light cream cheese. And I'm gonna do a mix of fat-free cheddar cheese and the Trader Joe's light Mexican blend. You're going to need some salt and pepper. And the recipe calls for cayenne, but I decided to use the Dax Italian Blast instead. One, because I don't have cayenne pepper. And two, because this is so delicious. Dax seasonings are amazing. They have zero salt. They are all natural, no MSG. This particular one, I love. It only has garlic, spices, black pepper, paprika, and onion. That's it. So there is nothing artificial in these. These are fantastic before weigh-in or if you are someone that watches your salt but you want a ton of flavor. So if you're interested in Dax, you can order them using the link down in the description box and my discount code here on the screen, and Dax will give you 10% off and free shipping. So you can't beat it. I love the Italian Blast. It does have a little bit of a kick, so it's a great substitution for cayenne pepper. So I'm gonna be using some of that. Also some garlic powder and onion powder. And then I have some leftover veggies here that I'm going to be cooking up in a pan with some potatoes as our side dish. So let's get started on our ground beef casserole. So the first thing for tonight's dinner is we need to get our ground beef browning on the stove. So I've added my one pound of 96.4 here to my frying pan. I also have diced up my potatoes and I'm gonna get those cooking down about halfway before we add in our vegetables because they'll cook a lot faster. I'm gonna go ahead and season my potatoes with just some salt and pepper. So let's get everything started here on the stove. After your hamburger has completely browned, we're gonna go ahead and add in our spices. So I'm gonna start with my Dax Italian Blast. 
And I would say add spices to your preference, your taste buds. And then I'm also going to add in some onion powder and some garlic powder and then just some pepper and some salt. Give this a good mix and then we're going to go ahead and add in our cream cheese. You'll add in your four ounces of cream cheese and you're just going to stir until your cream cheese is nice and melted and incorporated in with your hamburger. And as you can see here, my potatoes are coming along nicely. I'm about ready to add in my veggies. I went ahead and added in my veggies with my potatoes. So I'm just going to allow these to cook down a little bit longer until the vegetables are cooked through. And I'm just gonna be adding a little bit more salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic powder. Once your cream cheese has melted and mixed in with your hamburger, we're just gonna add in half of our mix of light and fat-free cheddar cheese. And then we're just gonna give it a stir. The other half of it is reserved to go on top and that's it. So it is a very low carb casserole. We're gonna put this into a baking dish and get it into the oven to allow the flavors to melt a little bit more and the cheese on top to melt. So the last step for our ground beef casserole is we're gonna go ahead and add on the rest of our shredded light and fat-free cheese kind of right over the top. And then we're just gonna get this into the oven until the cheese is melted and the casserole is cooked all the way through and nice and warm. But very simple, you could put this on a tortilla. We're just gonna go ahead and have it with a side of veggies and potatoes. So I just pulled our ground beef casserole out of the oven. It looks pretty good. I have to say it is pretty lackluster for a dinner. I would highly recommend that you pair this with something else like maybe as a topping to some rice or potatoes or pasta or put it in a tortilla shell. So I'm glad that I decided to make a side here of the potatoes and the vegetables. That way we can top our potatoes and our vegetables with our ground beef casserole. And I think that will be a perfect pairing. So let me get my ground beef casserole and my veggies plated up and I'll show you tonight's dinner and give you the smart points. So here is tonight's dinner. I have the potato and vegetable mixture and I topped it with the ground beef casserole. The ground beef casserole for one fourth is four smart points and the potato and vegetable mixture is also four smart points. So this is an eight smart point dinner. For tonight's dinner, I'm gonna be making a Hawaiian sheet pan dinner. Now the original recipe called for steak, but I decided to go ahead and do chicken. And I also added, am going to be adding zucchini to the original recipe as well. So let me show you what is in our Hawaiian sheet pan dinner. So first you're going to need a fresh pineapple, minced garlic, rice, wine vinegar, soy sauce, brown sugar alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using sucrine gold. Pineapple juice, so I'm just gonna take the juice out of this can of pineapple tidbits. Cornstarch, fresh ginger or ginger paste. Chicken, black pepper, a sweet onion, two bell peppers. I have an orange and half of a green and red that I'm gonna use up. And then I have this ginormous zucchini that I'm going to use partial of it as well on my sheet pan. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. The first thing that we need to do for tonight's dinner is chop everything up. So I'm gonna chop up my zucchini, my bell peppers, and my onion, put them here in a bowl, and then I will chop up my chicken last and so I can use the same cutting board for everything. So always chop your veggies before your meats. So but let's get everything all chopped up and ready to go. We also need to chop up our pineapple. I forgot that. So we'll be chopping that up as well. So now let's get everything chopped up.
once we've chopped up our vegetables, it is time to get our sauce together. So in my pan here, I have one quarter cup of the sucre and gold. I'm going to add six tablespoons of soy sauce, one quarter cup of rice wine vinegar, six ounces or three quarters of a cup of pineapple juice, and also I'm going to add about a tablespoon of my ginger paste, or you would do fresh ginger if that's what you were going to do. And then the last thing for the sauce is red chili flakes, which I am not going to use. So we're going to get this on the oven, allow it, or on the stove, allow it to simmer until our sauce thickens. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes. While our sauce is thickening on the stove, I have the remaining one quarter cup of pineapple juice and one tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm gonna go ahead and add that directly into my pineapple juice. And I'm just going to stir this and this will be our thickening agent for our sauce once our sauce has a chance to simmer. So you're just going to stir up that pineapple juice in the cornstarch and we're just going to set it aside until our sauce is ready. Once your sauce has been simmering on the stove for about 10 minutes or so, and it has starting to thicken a little bit, we are gonna add in that pineapple and cornstarch mixture. And we're just going to stir that and we're gonna let it simmer a little bit longer until it, ha it is nice and thick. And then we'll be ready to assemble our sheet pan. I just pulled my sauce off the stove. Look how good that looks. I'm just setting that aside and we're ready to assemble our sheet pan. So I have put down a sheet of foil, sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add our protein right in the middle of our sheet pan. So I'm gonna take my little basting brush here that we're gonna be using for the sauce, and I'm just gonna break the pieces of chicken up just a little bit and kind of center them in the middle here. And then from there, we're gonna add our veggies and pineapple all around our pieces of chicken. So I'm going to do my peppers and zucchini and onion and my pineapple. So we'll get that spread out all around our chicken. you have your veggies pineapple everything spread out around your chicken this is already looking so good the next step is we're going to take our sauce and we are just going to baste it over the top of our chicken our vegetables we want to go ahead and use all of this sauce I might actually just kind of dump and then we can kind of baste from there but you do want to make sure that you get a little bit of our delicious homemade teriyaki on all of our vegetables all of our pieces of chicken so I'll get this sauce spread out and then we'll be ready to put this into the oven and our Hawaiian sheet pan dinner is ready to go into the oven. This smells so good. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes. We'll pull it out, give it a quick mix, and pop it back in for about another 10 minutes. While our sheet pan is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and do some rice. So I'm gonna do this success 10 minute boil and bake jasmine rice. They come in these little pouches. This is the perfect amount for two people. I'm going to be having half of a cup. That is what is figured into the points. So this is super easy. You just pop it in some boiling water for 10 minutes and you have absolutely perfect jasmine rice. I just pulled the Hawaiian sheet pan out of the oven. This looks incredible. It smells so good. So my rice is just about done. So I'll get this plated up show you exactly what the portion size is and give you the smart points. So here is my dinner for tonight. Here is what's left on the pan. This makes a total of four servings. So we actually have a little bit more than four servings, but I did measure out one half of a cup of the jasmine rice for three smart points. And then I layered on the chicken, the sauce, and all the veggies. It is a total of two smart points for that. So this is a five smart point dinner including the rice and it looks absolutely delicious for tonight's dinner i'm going to be making skinny orange chicken over jasmine rice super excited for tonight's dinner so let me show you first what is in the orange chicken first actually first let's do the rice so of course i'm going to be having some jasmine rice and i'm actually going to cook mine in broth so if you have broth available it just adds a lot more flavor to your rice so i'm going to cook mine in some veggie broth now what's in the orange chicken is you're going to need some 
oil, avocado oil, olive oil, whatever you have on hand, minced garlic, rice, wine, vinegar, salt and pepper, soy sauce, so I'm gonna be using the coconut aminos, red chili pepper flakes, and ginger. The recipe also calls for white pepper. I'm just gonna substitute regular pepper. You're gonna need some cornstarch. I'm gonna use sugar-free honey only because it really makes the points way less and you can't tell any difference. This is the Nature's Hollow Sugar-Free Honey. It is delicious, it tastes like regular honey. You can purchase this off of Nettrition's website. So down in the description box is a link. It'll take you directly to Nettrition. Look around, you guys. There is a ton of WW-friendly things on that website and this is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna use the sugar-free honey. You're also going to need an orange and lastly, of course, some chicken. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So I've got my rice going in my broth. I did rinse it with some water to kind of get some of the starch off. So I'm gonna let my rice start cooking. In my pan here, I have one teaspoon of my avocado oil. To that, I am going to be adding in my chicken. So I went ahead and just kind of diced up my chicken into a little bit smaller pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken here to my pan. And then I'm just going to season it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're gonna start the cooking process. Let this cook until almost all the way cooked through. And while our chicken is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and make our orange sauce. So let's get started on our orange sauce for our chicken. So first I'm gonna add in three cloves-ish of minced garlic. I never measure my garlic. A little extra garlic, never hurt anybody. To that, I'm going to add in my orange juice. Now, I did fresh squeeze from an actual orange, so it's zero points. It did not quite get me half of a cup. So when you make this recipe, I recommend that you get two navel oranges and go ahead and squeeze the juice out of both of those. I'm also going to add half of a cup of my sugar-free honey. It's a lot of honey. That's why the sugar-free really is going to save you on, definitely save you guys on some points. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. To that, I'm also going to add one third cup of my coconut aminos or soy sauce, whatever it is that you are using. We are also going to add one quarter cup of rice wine vinegar. We are going to add three tablespoons of cornstarch. And then I'm gonna add just a hair of red pepper flakes because I don't really like anything very spicy. And then I'm also going to add in some ginger. And then lastly, a little bit of pepper. And then we're gonna give this a good stir here with our whisk. You can also add a zest of orange. I threw my orange away before I realized that. So I probably recommend adding a little bit of the zest. That'll just give it even that more orangey flavor. So look at that, you guys. So I'm gonna let this sit while our chicken's cooking and we're gonna add this directly to our chicken once it's brown. Once your chicken has cooked all the way through, we're gonna go ahead and add in our delicious orange sauce. And we're just gonna let this cook for just a few more minutes until the sauce thickens and everything is nice and combined. And our rice is actually coming along nicely. It is about done as well. So very quick, easy dinner. Look at our orange chicken. So once it starts to thicken from the cornstarch, we're gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and show you how to measure out six servings. And that noise you hear is my Brussels sprouts cooking away in my microwave. So let's get this chicken measured out into six servings. So I've put my entire batch of orange chicken into a bowl on my scale. Oh, I got a little bit of a glare. So it's 781 grams for the entire bowl of orange chicken. So we are going to take 781 and we are going to divide that by six and that is the number of grams we're going to include in a serving. So let me do the math and I'll show you what one sixth of the recipe looks like. So here is my completed dinner. So I went ahead and measured out one half of a cup of jasmine rice and that is three smart points. One sixth of the orange chicken. Wait until you guys hear that, this. Three smart points, that's it. 
and all you're accounting for is the sauce. The chicken is zero and most of the sauce ingredients are zero as well. So this entire serving of skinny orange chicken is only six smart points. Of course, my Brussels sprouts are zero. I just have some salt and pepper and some spray butter. Now, if you are going to make the orange chicken with regular honey, just for the orange chicken, it would be six points. And then you would have to add three additional points for rice, so it would be nine. So depending on what you wanna use, but the sugar-free honey from Nutrition is delish. So this is going to be my six smart point dinner. Thank you for joining me on another five nights of dinner on WW. I hope you enjoyed seeing all five of the delicious, amazing recipes that I shared with you. Don't forget to check out my Facebook group. Join us. It is such a fun, positive, wonderful place to be no matter what healthy eating or diet journey you're on. We'd love to have you as part of our Facebook group. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure that you subscribe, hit that little bell. That way you're notified every time that I upload a new video. You don't want to miss a single one. I'd appreciate it if you thumbs up this one. Comment down below. Let me know which of these recipe or recipes were your very favorite. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.